All right, injuries here. Uh, we've got uh, Fountain has a groin strain. Um, Fenton, uh, same thing with the shoulder. He's making progress. Jody's making progress. Uh, Jennings, Yang, and Stallworth has a knee contusion and working through that. Other than that, everybody else practiced. Uh, lighter practice today, lighter weather for us, so it was cool today. Um, and the guys got good work in. I, listen, I appreciate the effort and attention to detail that they're doing. We can always get better in that area, which we're working on, uh, but they're, they're, they're focusing in and, and working, and that's, uh, that's so important. Anyways, with that, time's yours. Looking at John Gordon here shortly in a few minutes, as you look over his total body of work from the off-season workout program through 11 days of camp, how would you evaluate his, his development? Yeah, Josh is really, he's attacked it. Um, he, um, he's really the last few days here, he's had really good days. And, and um, uh, again, I, I appreciate his effort. And he, he's kind of the senior citizen of that group. You know, he's the older <clears throat> receiver in that mix and has had success in this league. And the way he approaches it is full throttle. And he, he's going for it. And there's great competition. But for him to be in there doing what he's doing, I appreciate, you know, every snap he takes in there. You guys moved on from, from Baker in the past few days. Just, what do you think went, went into it? Just not really working out here. Yeah, you know, good kid. He just uh, we we had to make some decisions on who's who there, and that's uh, that's the route we went. You talked about the competition at wide receiver. It's continued throughout camp. Is this about as competitive as the group that you had in trying to when you're kind of have to get down to those numbers? Yeah, I, I would tell you probably yes. I mean, every camp is competitive, but I tell you that. Uh, because of some of the openings that we've had with people leaving, there, there's competition, um, and, and it's uh, it's good. And then Brett's brought in g great people, so he's brought in good players that are that are going to compete. And somewhere we're going to have to let some good players, you know, good players go. I'm sure. So, uh, and, and, but it's a tribute to Brett and the job he's done. I mean, obviously you have new veterans in, but a lot of rookies this year. Has that changed maybe your approach to rotations a bit during this camp as far as, you know, maybe wanting to give some different guys looks and so maybe some other guys haven't gotten as many chances? Um, I t well, we've done that before, so I, I don't want to tell you we, we haven't. We've moved people in and out just to see what we've got. One of the tricks is to come out of this thing, uh, especially with the three games, come out of this thing knowing who you've got and – um, and so we've tried to mix them in, and some of that chemistry stuff is important. See how they do with the ones, some of the twos, mix them in with the ones, and see how they handle it. Uh, you know, depth in this league is is a beautiful thing. I mean, you, you want to make sure you've got it, and you don't want to miss on that. And sometimes those guys get neglected a little bit. But. I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. You went to see Vermeil uh, yes. before you went in the Hall of Fame. What, what compelled you to, to go take that trip out there? Yeah, he's been a great mentor to me. I mean, for a long, lot of years, and uh, you know how Coach Vermeil is. I mean, he, he, if he, if he's in with you and knows you, he's in. So um, I, I've had some great times. I mean, we've kind of followed a little bit of the same, a couple of the same steps here. At Philadelphia, which is a unique place, and Kansas City, unique place. So uh, we've had that experience. And uh, when you're a head coach, there's not not a lot of guys you can you can talk to that have. Uh, you know, that have been in the same places you've been, and, and he's been tremendous that way, just coaching me up on things. Do you have any stories about what, a resource, what kind of resource he was for you when you were first getting started back in Philly? Yeah. Um, I, I, I invited him out to practice and uh, when, he was, when he was done with his, with his coaching, and, and uh, um, I had called him. Actually, I had called him and talked to him before I took the Philly job, and... and uh, he, he, you know, he just said, listen, it, it's a great organization, great people. Um, it's tough, but it's a, it's a great place to be. And, if, you know, if you can coach there, you can, you know, you, and you make it through, uh, you're doing okay. So, um, <clears throat> but he was, and he lived there. That, that was kind of his home base, um, even though he's still working here and he's finishing up with the Rams. So, <clears throat> um you know, and then he did the same thing when I came here, the exact same thing. He, he, he talked to me about the atmosphere here and um, said what bad guys you are. No, he didn't. <laughs> but, he, you know, he, he coached me up on it. And 
that's priceless, right? I mean, that's priceless. So, and he checks in all the time. I mean, if it's not once a week, it's pretty close to once a week, and just make sure everything's going all right. And he still he loves the game and you know that whole deal. So, I appreciate all that. Chris Jones in a second. Just how have you seen him evolve into the player he's kind of become? You guys today. Yeah, I mean, Chris has grown up right before us. I, I think we've seen that. Um, he he's. Uh, I mean, he's going wild out here every day in maximum effort. He's in great shape. He's Over the last few years here, he's really dedicated himself to being in tip-top shape and, and pushing himself. He's a fun-loving guy, but um, he's learned to kind of fu- funnel that in to when he's on the field. It's all business, and, and that's how he's gone about it. So, he, uh, you know, Joe's been good with him, and... Working, working hard. So I listen. He, he's he's on pace for a good year. Coach, we also got Creed Humphrey here shortly as well. If, if I were to make a statement that Creed is one of the best centers in the NFL, how much would you agree with that? Yeah. So I think Creed's. Uh, I would tell you Creed's challenge is this year. You know, um, that he was a newcomer last year. Now all these coaches have had a chance to study him for an off season. And, uh, you know, they'll try to throw him some different pitches in there. So uh, how he handles that will be important. Um, you, you don't, you know, he played well last year and was one of the best. But, uh, the, you know, these coaches get creative and they're going to challenge you. So the work that he's put in and he's putting in now is so important. Yeah. Coach, you talked about having Michael Vick at practice yesterday. What type of relationship is yeah, um, I'm a big Michael Vick fan. I, I, I've watched him uh, go through his trials and tribulations and come out on the better end. He's a, he's a great father, husband, and uh, um, he loves the game most of all. And, um, you know, just this was he's doing he's doing your, he's doing what you guys do. So um, to get a little football fix, he, he was he was excited about that. And what a great player too. I mean, he was a phenomenal player and big heart. He's got he's got a great heart to him. Last two. Yeah, Andy, for this passing offense with guys that don't necessarily have the game experience the lead all the time, how do you get the team passing to the rhythm to open this next level? Yeah, so it's important that we practice those. And um, it, it's good to you call them in practice when you're going against a defense. We might not always get to the deep one, it might be covered. So these practices here, these ten to tens where you have opportunities to take shots down the field. You take them and, and you get yourself on the on the same page with the receivers. We'll continue to do that uh, as we go. Last one, Aaron. Being in Canton, talking with Coach Reveal, do you ever think about putting on that gold jacket yourself? Yeah, that's not. I mean, that's not where my mind was. Obviously, I mean, I was there for for him. That seems, uh, you know, that those kind of things you don't. Uh, you, I'm listen. I don't think about. I'm trying to get this team ready to go play. So, um, but it was great to see him. I'll tell you what was a unique story was there were five guys that stood on the stage there. Stage is broken up, uh, you know, it's a, it's like a platform like this. There are two lines on either side, <clears throat> and there are all the yellow jackets that are already in the Hall of Fame. And each guy came down, the four before Coach Vermeil, he was last in line. They come down one, one side, one the other side, and they shake hands and high five hug and all that. <clears throat> the time that it took those four together to come down, took Coach Vermeil to come down and get on that stage. I mean, I mean to the point where where the, the fellow that was emceeing just goes, hey, this is Dick Vermeil. He's coached for 50-plus years, 50-plus years. He knows everybody. And that says it all. I mean, that's why he's there. Phenomenal, phenomenal human being. Yep, good.